At the New York Times that summer, they had a lead on what would become the biggest story yet. They had discovered another meeting between the Trump campaign and the Russians. My colleagues and I have been doing some reporting on this, the idea that there was another Russian meeting that we didn't totally understand uh, that had been undisclosed uh, during the campaign. We've seen it, whether it be they learned the Donald Trump Jr. had hosted the meeting with a Russian lawyer, Natalia Veselnitskaya. Also in the room, Jared Kushner and campaign chairman Paul Manafort. The newspaper wanted a comment from the White House. But that week, the president was in Hamburg, Germany for the G20 summit and his first meeting with Vladimir Putin. This is a big distraction on the sidelines of the summit as the White House officials try to figure out how to respond to this inquiry from the New York Times. The White House says, we want to be helpful. We want to engage on this. Just give us some time. After the summit, the president himself took control of handling the New York Times. My phone rings, and it's the Air Force One operator. You know, can you please hold? And it's, I know we were supposed to have a call. I, I know we're, we're late. Can you just give us a little more time? We're working on this. And of course, we now know that at the front of Air Force One, Hope Hicks and President Trump are, are kind of working on this statement. He is at the center of it and driving it. And you have the president physically dictating a message that he's going to put in the name of his son, Donald Trump Jr. The lawyers for the president are losing their minds. <laughs> they are not on Air Force One. They are not in Germany. But they are hearing secondhand that a statement is about to be issued to the New York Times. To write a statement just, I mean, that's just uh, amateur hour. But in fairness to these lawyers, I mean, I, they couldn't control their client. They still can't control their client. White House responds to a report in the New York Times that claims Donald Trump Jr. Trump's statement, written for his son, said the meeting was about adoption of Russian orphans. It was a short introductory meeting. I asked Jared and Paul to stop by. We primarily discussed a program about the adoption of Russian children. But there was a reason for the meeting that the president's statement did not mention. Last night, the New York Times published details about a meeting during the campaign involving a Kremlin-linked lawyer. As the president returned to Washington, it didn't take long for the truth to come out. The explosive news about President Trump and Russia, it involves Donald Trump Jr. breaking in the last... It only takes about 24 hours for that statement to completely blow up. A potential bombshell from the president's own son, Donald in Trump In the days Jr. that followed, the New York Times discovered a series of emails setting up the meeting. Another day, another installment in the Russian election. The next day we reported that what had actually happened is that Don Jr. had been promised dirt on Hillary Clinton by this R Russian lawyer. The Crown Prosecutor of Russia offered to provide the Trump campaign with some official documents and information that would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father. In the email setting up the meeting, Don Jr. was told that this meeting was part of the Russian government's efforts to support now President Trump. This is obviously very high level and sensitive information, but is part of Russia and its government support for Mr. Trump. I mean, I remember saying, oh my God, it says it, it says it in an email. This is part of the Russian government's efforts to support Donald Trump. We're talking about top aides in the middle of the campaign. We're talking about Jared Kushner, Paul Manafort, Donald Trump Jr. sitting down with a Russian woman who has told them that she's going to give them some sort of information on Hillary Clinton. It's a crystal clear reason why they're there. What does Don Jr. write back in an email? If it's what you say, I love it. I love it, especially later in the summer. Coming on top of everything else that had come out about all these Russian contacts with the campaign, the Trump Tower email trail was incredibly damning. There's no ambiguity about this. This is there in black and white. And whatever they actually talked about in the meeting, the advertised intent of the meeting was collusion. 
For his part, the president would downplay the importance of the meeting. Nothing happened from the meeting. Zero happened from the meeting. And honestly, I think the press made a very big deal over something that really a lot of people would do. Now we've got another email. An email but that special counsel Robert Mueller was paying close attention. The question, was there anything illegal about the meeting or the misleading statement? The president's lawyers, they're intensely concerned that the president has essentially now added to an obstruction case. Mueller would look into the writing of that statement on Air Force One. If the president's up there and he's deliberately crafting a lie to cover the purpose of the meeting, is that another step in, in the obstruction investigation? Is it also another step in terms of the conspiracy slash con collusion investigation? It shows that the Trump team was willing to engage with the Russians. What is it that special counsel Robert Mueller knows?